Well, hello, hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA coming to you live because it's 3 p.m. on Wednesday. And every Wednesday around this time, I get to hang out with you and paint something fun. And for the past couple of weeks, we've been painting some Christmas smalls. And I thought that maybe you would like to join me in learning how to paint a beautiful, cute little nutcracker. So welcome. This is a little cutie that I painted yesterday. I grabbed some inspo from Pinterest and I painted him and, and he could really be any color. You can make this red pink if you wanted to do like a vintage look. You could change up any of these colors. You can see the shine a little bit. I used some gold digger moonshine metallics and today I'm going to show you a very simple way how to paint this really cute little nutcracker. I'm keeping it up nice and close so that you are not going to see my face um, but you will see this canvas and you will uh, you will get a front row seat on how to paint a little Christmas artwork. All right, welcome. So if you're a new person watching me, you can drop in the comments below, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. If you're a regular back to join me again for some Christmas, Christmas crafts, well then welcome. Thanks for coming back to join me. You wanna jump in really, really quick and get started so we don't miss a thing? <laughs> I think this is gonna be a fun little thing to paint. Hi, Kimberly, hey, Michelle. Okay, so let me tell you the colors that I used. Um, so that if you wanted to grab your paints, you could go ahead and grab some paints and paint along with me. You can paint this on wood, you can paint this on canvas. My plan is to use this image on a seat of a old wood chair to create a cute little Christmas seat for maybe some front door fun. Oh, I see somebody said they painted a fala llama. I love it, send it to me, I would love to see. Um, as you know, I'm a vendor at a booth here. I think that a lot of people that watch me paint furniture and crafts and small things. And at Christmas time, I like to paint some fun little Christmas decor and it just keeps everybody happy and finds fun things to stock my booth up with. So painting on canvas is a really easy way to kind of learn how to get started. These are simple canvases. This actually had another image on it before and I just painted right over top. So today, <clears throat> let's paint ourselves a little Christmas nutcracker. Throw me some hearts, show me some love, let me know that you can see nice and close. I brought the camera in as close as I could without banging it to my arms. I'm trying to keep you right here so that you can see how we're gonna paint this together. All right, I see some hearts, let's begin. This is a black canvas. This canvas is actually black. So I just gently prepped this canvas with a little bit of caviar and a little bit of fluff. I just kind of like to do a back ground before I paint. What this is gonna do is just gonna give you some dimension to your piece. If I paint it directly on the back of a black canvas, sometimes what happens is your image stands out too much. This is gonna give me a little bit of fluff for the background. So to prep this piece today, all I did was mix two colors together, caviar and cotton to kind of cross hatch a nice background. So if you are comfortable, you can use a pencil to trace out some circles and some shapes. This is very simple to do shape-wise. His head is actually just a really big circle, so you're just gonna kind of pencil in a circle shape. Or if you're a true artist and you just feel like going with the flow, you can easily just jump right in and start. So I put a circle right in the middle of my canvas for his face. His hat is just basically, it's almost like a, a little bit of a rectangle, just a little bit wider on the ends. So I just came up here and kind of curved those ends and then his arms, if you look at a nutcracker, they always have those fun little movable arms. I just kind of curled his arms around here on either side. And then his coarse teeth and beard will come in the middle. I don't draw in the teeth and the beard when I do this piece because this is kind of like the last little bit of the painting, right? You're gonna start with the base, which is your face, your hat, your clothes. And then the last thing you're gonna do is actually his hair and his, uh, his beard. So grab your paints, let's, let's get started. I used red today. I'm gonna to be using honky tonk red. You can use rustic red or whatever red you like. I'm also gonna be mixing that red with some brown or black. I chose caviar today. There's holy guacamole here for the green. I have gold digger in his embellishments. I grabbed a little dusty blue for the eyes. And then again, you see that holy guacamole and a little bit of that gold digger here on either side. His face is a, a custom mix, which I can show you how to paint uh, this color very easily, but if you had a, a nice soft pink, that would work as well. I'm gonna mix a little bit of Florida orange in with some red, rustic red, and a little bit of fluff, which is white, to create a skin tone, and then use those colors to deepen and darken this area to create his cheeks and his face. All right, so let's get cracking. Let's paint a super cute little 
Nutcracker. Can you still see him if he sits back there? He's hiding a little bit if I put him back here. Let me prop him up. See if I can't give him a little bit of uh, some show time back here. I have a lot of things on my tiny table. I need a bigger table. Will he stay there? He won't. Where am I going to put him? Where he's going to stay put? That's the only place he's going to stay. Okay, so you can see him over here. All right. So to start with, if you got a circle for his face, I'm going to jump right in and grab a paintbrush. You can use whatever paint brushes you like. I like to use these artist brushes from Dixie Belle. These artist brushes are a bit smaller. They come in this package and you can get four in here. I have another one that I've already used yesterday. They're synthetic. You can wash them easily and they're really easy to use. Okay, so I'm going to dip a little bit of this Florida orange, like a bare minimum amount. And I'm just going to deposit it over here on my paper plate. I'm also going to grab a little bit of that red. And so for the red I'm using today is the honky tonk. And now I'm going to start to mix some fluff in with this two colors. What this is going to give me is a nice little skin tone color. It's just going to be a nice little soft pink. Using that orange here is going to allow you to really kind of make it a skin tone per se. You can choose whatever skin tone for your nutcracker you like. They come in all shapes, colors, and sizes. And this, my friends, is the color that I'm going to be using to create his face. Okay? So we have a circle in the middle of our canvas, and we're just going to start brushing on the middle of my face. In the middle of his face, I should say. I like to use a bit of a bigger brush for this part. What's going to allow me to do is really kind of get in here and get it around the edges. Once I actually get close to the circle's edge, I'm going to switch out my brush to a smaller brush. I just want to fill in. Now you can see how I'm not being too, uh, too like painting up and down. I think that painting should be fun and that painting should have texture. So I like to mash my paint around, make it cross hatched a little bit left and right. And what that's going to do is just allow you to really get in there and create something something fun. Give it a little bit more dimension. So I've just switched out my brush. I'm going to be using a bunch of different brush, brush, spit that out, bunch of different brushes today. So now I'm going to be a little bit more careful and try and make my circle come around. I've gotten a great response lately to everybody loving these tutorials, these little Christmas fun tutorials. I think that uh, they're a great way to kind of get in the Christmas spirit. And who doesn't like to sit down and paint something? on a canvas. Besides the fact that you can finish one of these guys fairly quick, you can probably get them done in less than, I would say half an hour. If I wasn't doing all this talking and teaching, I could paint one out in about 20 minutes, I would think. So there you go. So now we've got a nice, beautiful circle for his face. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of the red tone and I'm going to mix in kind of darker around the edges, if that makes sense. So I'm going to take just a bit more of that Florida orange, and that pink color, I'm going to darken the edges. I want his face to have a little bit of dimension. So by using a bit of a darker color around the edges, it's just going to make him look cuter, I feel like. So there we go. So this is the start of your nutcracker. So this is going to be his face right here where his teeth are going to go. We're going to be painting over top of that. So for now, I'm just going to let his face get dry and we're going to work on the second part of our project. Up at the top, we're going to start his hat. Now, this hat is very basic, right? Because if you look at a nutcracker, and I should have brought one in, I have a collection of them on my mantle. Their hats are basically just that tall kind of a top hat. We're going to build in this shape here. I'm not going to go over top of the pink. I'm going to let that pink of his face get dry, but we're going to go up here to the top and create this. Thank you, Carrie, for watching. Yes, I'd love to see your winter scene too, if you decide to paint that. That's very popular. Um, very popular for me here at my store where I sell my items. People love that, those winter scenes. I brought a picnic basket in that we did together the other day and it's so cute. So I'm going to jump into my rustic, or sorry, my I actually have rustic red, but I picked honky tonk red because it's just that bit of a brighter color. So again, kind of left, right, cross hatch, get it on there. I also brought my heat gun. Normally you would be waiting for your layers of paint to dry. I'm going to come up here to the edge and start to shape in his helmet. Would you call his hat a helmet or would you call it like, I don't think it's a helmet that nutcrackers wear. I think they just have like a beautiful, a beautiful hat. 
And here's the deal. This is like open for interpretation. If you wanted to change his hat, make it a top hat, maybe you want to take his hat and make it like a Santa hat or a different shape, it's totally up to you. But this is a classic style of hat for a nutcracker. So I'm going to paint it in. We're going to go close to the edge, but not all the way down because I don't want to mix it up with my face that I've laid down. Once we get this kind of where it's going to live, I'm going to show you a little trick about deepening and darkening this color to give his hat a little bit more dimension. Can you see how this hat has a little bit more brush strokes in it? So we're going to do that. We're going to take a little bit of the caviar that I have on my plate with the same brush and I'm going to start to shade this area. I'm going to bring the caviar in on the edges, right? Because this hat kind of has like a curve to it, if you would think. So if you brought this over and created that little bit of shadow of depth, what you're doing is just allowing this hat to kind of become a little bit more three dimensional, right? Because you're creating a darker shadow on the edge, which tells people that this hat is probably curved. So now we've just added that darker tone to the edges here. And then this way you're able to um, bring it in. I see Teresa watching. Hey, Teresa, we're painting a nutcracker today. You want to join us? Grab your paints. So now if you come down here, remember we drew the shape in for his arm. Really, nutcracker's arms are always kind of a little bit of a, a curve. It's like they're attached. He's like a little bit of a marionette, if you ask me. So I'm just going to come in here and make his arms. And I'm not even really painting them in yet. I'm just kind of shaping them in. I want to make sure that I do both his arms in similar size, right? Because they would be the same. So by kind of laying them both out at the same time, I'm going to be able to make sure that they are the same size. And excuse the noise outside. It sounds like somebody has their leaf blower going, which is the season to blow all the leaves off your yard. <laughs> it's going to be a little noisy outside. Hopefully the microphone won't pick that up. So there we go. So there's one arm shape. Let's paint in the other one. You guys will be so surprised. Once you paint a couple of these, how fast, how fast they go. So now you have a couple options. You can do his body shape uh, as you wish. For this, I kind of brought his body up like these little curves. You could also do straight across if you felt like it. It's, it's entirely up to you. Like I said, it's personal preference for these little guys. I'm going to actually change out my color and then work with a little bit of that beautiful green. So I really like Dixie Belle's Holy Guacamole. This color is only available in this tiny little size, but it's perfect for crafting and I use it quite a bit. So I'm going to dip into my Holy Guacamole and I've switched brushes. I'm going to create a similar fashion to what I did before. I'm just going to kind of shape in and maybe before I do that, I'm going to dry his face because I don't want this paint here on the edge to blend in with what I'm doing. So we're going to dry this small edge of my canvas, make sure that his face is dry so that I don't mix my paint colors. We'll even make sure the tiny edges of his arms are dry. This way it'll be easier to blend. So we're going to make almost like a collar. Okay. We're going to come up in the same shape as that we did his arms. And I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of a collar shape because it's almost like he has like, they have epaulettes on, don't they usually? And you could do this in gold as well, but I'm going to do add some gold into the top of his arms once we get to that point. So for now, I'm just going to take my holy guacamole. And again, you could use blue if you prefer. You could use another color. And I'm going to stop here because I'm going to be using another color down by his body. So these little epaulettes, what do you call them? Ep epaulettes? I can't think of the name of them. It's where they have their usual badges and fringe and things. I see one tiny little puppy dog hair. I have dogs at my house and let me tell you, if it's not one doggy hair, it's 10 stuck on things where it shouldn't be. Did I get it? I didn't get it. Get that doggy hair. Where'd he go? Come on. Puppy dogs. There, I got it. <laughs> one little puppy hair down. So there you go. So this is my holy guacamole. 
And this is his epaulets in his shoulder pads, right? Remember, here's where his mouth is going to be, and then we're going to bring his beard down. So I'm going to go back to my red color, I think, because I want to add a little bit of that red down where his body will be. I want to continue the body down. So I'm going to go back to my honky tonk red. And as always, if you guys decide you wanted to paint this, I would love to see. I'd love to see what you paint. It's like a joy for me to inspire and have people decide that they want to paint something similar to what I painted as well. It's a lot of fun. This is what I'm here for is inspo. You guys can change it up as you want to. You don't have to paint it the exact same. Again, I don't really want to get up here and mess around with my green. So for now, while I'm working, I'm going to add in another coat of this beautiful red onto his arms. Thicken up that paint a little bit since that first layer got dry. You can curve his arms with a touch of the caviar, similar to as what we did with the hat, by adding a darker tone on one side or both. You're allowing yourself to kind of curve and shape his arms because these nutcrackers, they have round arms, right? Their arms are always a little bit round. They're kind of made up of a circular shape. So by adding just that touch of darkness in at the edges, you're just giving this piece a bit more dimension, right? So I'm gonna get out my heat gun as well. Does anybody have any questions while I'm waiting for this heat gun to do its work? I can see my camera and I can see if you have questions. This is a really cute way to paint Christmas art for like on a, a plank art and drill some holes in to make like a door hanger. You could paint one of these guys really tall and you can make like a front porch sitter. It is a lot of fun and really quite simple to paint a gorgeous nutcracker. So I'm going to come back in up here and paint in kind of like my second coat. And I'm going to switch out my brush to something a little bit smaller with a, a bit of a sharper edge. I want to use a brush that has a bit more of a, a sharper edge. No questions? Carrying on. So remember, his beard is going to come here. I'm only working kind of outwards to the edge where his beard will not be. Because his beard goes on last, it's going to cover this little line in the middle and you're not even going to see it. So I'm just going to come up here around his little shoulder pads and there is his cute little red vest. So now his red vest matches his red arms and his cute little red hat. Now let's move along, shall we? Now that my face is dried, I'm going to come back in and add just a little bit more shading. We mixed up a color to complete his shading. We mixed up a tiny bit of this gorgeous Florida orange. We mixed it in with a touch of that red as well as some fluff. And what that gave us is a tone for our Nutcracker's face. So I'm gonna try to come in here and highlight his edges a little bit more. I want him to have more of a defined edge, if that makes sense. Sometimes some of this paint is about building in layers. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So now he's kind of had a, a defined edge to his face. So if you'd like, what you can do now is start to come in here onto the top. I'm going to switch brushes again and go into something a little bit smaller. I'm going to go back into my holy guacamole. I'm actually going to add a little bit of water to my holy guacamole on my tray. So I feel like my holy guacamole is just a bit thick. I've had it open quite a bit to paint. Let's start to add some, what would you call this? Decor to his hat? <laughs> Let's add some decor to his hat. Now, his hat curves like this. If you curve it this way, you totally can. But if you curve it down, it's going to start to look like his hat has a brim, okay? I see Teresa still watching. Teresa, I want you to paint one of these and put it in your booth because I think that they are the cutest little Christmas decor. Paint it on a plank of wood and make yourself a little sign. People love some hand painting. So there's my holy guacamole with a curved brim. Again, I'm gonna have to build that up and the last little bit of the brim is going to be gold. So for now, I'm just gonna let that sit. Make sure that my holy guacamole down here is thick enough. Cover this up. 
and I'm gonna give it a tiny blast with my heat gun. Hi Patty, how are you? So again, just drying that holy guacamole up a little bit so that I can build up my layers. So I'm just going over his little brim of his hat, over top of the red. And I'm gonna also show you guys a really neat trick to getting these perfect little circles that are on his hat. Can you see how he has those little circles on his hat? I got the trick for you right there. This guy's looking a little orange, is he? Do you think he's too orange? Should I pink him up a little bit? Eh, I think he's all right. All the, all the little men can be different colors. Let's go in here and add some cheeks to his cutie little face. So for the cheeks, I'm gonna take the same color that I had on the palette, which is that mix of orange, white, and red, and I'm just gonna create a pink. If you have pink, you could use it. You could use, let's see, peony. You could use whatever you wish, honestly. There's no rules in painting. You can, you can choose your pinks, and I'm just gonna draw two circles for cheeks. Let's draw some cheeks. There's one. I try and make them the same size. Again, trying to not sit in front of the camera is sometimes harder than you would think. Showing you guys the best angle leaves me in an awkward position. <laughs> this is what I'm here for. It's to teach. It's to teach. So now we have two cutie little cheeks. So actually his cheeks match his, his skin. His skin tone is definitely more orange than my, my boy over there, but this is cute. I'm liking this. He's got cute little cheeks. I see Pam watching. How are you, Pam? So now we're gonna make his nose. So to make his nose, if you look at the canvas that I have, it's basically the shape of a triangle. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit lower in the middle, and we're going to add his nose to my piece, okay? So I'm gonna use the same colors. Again, trying to balance this so you can see so that I can see. I'm going to bring a line straight down. Okay, there's your guide. If that helps you, that's your, your guide. From this line, I'm gonna bring it straight down here, and then I'm gonna bring him down into a point. Totally up for interpretation. If you wanted to make his nose a different color, if you wanted to change the shape, you can. You're the boss of you. I'm gonna dip into a little bit more red, and I'm gonna bring in the other side. So I'm just gonna do the same shape more of his cheek color on the other side. No two nutcrackers are gonna be the same, right? You can paint whatever you like. So there's his nose. So you can give him a long nose, you can give him a short nose, entirely up to you. I'm gonna bring up this little triangle a little bit further and straighten out this line. Okay, so now, hat is here, we've started his brim, we've got his cute little cheeks and his nose. It's your call next if you want to do his eyes or if you want to do his, his mustache, <laughs> his mustache, because it's up to you. So I think I'm going to do his eyes and for his eyes, I'm going to start with white. So I'm going to jump into the white, which is just fluff that I have here. And his shapes of his eyes, if you look at the canvas, it's basically just an oval. Okay. I'm going to do almost like an oval with points on either end. Okay. Again, your call if you want to add Big eyes, small eyes, whatever you like. You're, it's up to you. So I'm just gonna start, which eyeball should I start with? Let's start with this one. So remember, this is just an oval, like this. It doesn't matter what size, as long as they are similar in shape, okay? And I'm gonna paint them entirely in white because you're gonna start with the whites of the eyes. After the white dries, we're gonna move into his blue eyes. Let's give him blue eyes today. You could choose brown, you could choose hazel, green. Green would be cute. So now we've got two shapes, right? Two beautiful shapes of eyeballs. I'm just gonna make sure that they're filled in all the way. I'm gonna wash off my brush. And I think while my eyes are drying, let's do his mustache. So, Nutcracker always has a mustache and a beard, right? You want to do a white mustache? You totally can. You can do a black mustache. I think it gives him a dapper, a dapper little face if you do black, right? So I'm gonna use the same brush. I like that pokey kind of a, a brush. This is one of the Dixie Belle Artisan brushes. They are very easy to use. I'm gonna make sure that there's no extra water on my brush. Now, don't get this paint from here onto your, onto your hand, because it's gonna be, now we're gonna to start to get into some details. And I don't wanna get 
my leaning hand making a mess. So I'm gonna try and hold this so that you can see. If you look at his mustache, he wants to have it, I wanna have it curl up into his cheeks. Let's dry his cheeks so I don't travel any of his cheek color into his mustache. I want a little thick on the edge of that paint, so I wanna dry it up. I'll even dry it down here, so if I put my hand down, I won't get anything on me. Okay, so mustache, mustachio. I'm going to make two basic tadpole shapes, right? Oh, it's so hard to do and show you at the same time. I'm gonna bring his mustache over, literally like a tadpole. We're gonna curl it up, and I'm going to make this mustache curl into his cheek. Do you have to? No. I think it looks super cute. So I'm going to keep using my black caviar to define his mustache. And I mean, if this was easier for you to lay flat on the ground to paint, you could do that as well. Again, I'm trying to teach you, so I'm keeping it up high. So now let's try and make this mustache match. I'm gonna try and make the same size Sorry, when I concentrate, I don't talk. <laughs> I'm gonna, even whenever I get quiet, it means I'm thinking and concentrating. And I wanna bring it up and curl it around into his cutie cheeks, okay? So that's pretty close, pretty close, pretty matchy-matchy, right? That's all right, that's cute. I think that this little mustache end Maybe got a little less mustache wax than the other guy. He's not as pointy, but there's no rules in painting. Adorable. What do you think? Super cute so far? He kind of looks like an Oktoberfest dude right now. He doesn't really look like a nutcracker yet. He needs the teeth. <laughs> he needs the teeth to work on that. So now that this piece is finished, what I'm gonna do is use the same brush, which is, has this black caviar, and I'm gonna give him some eyebrows, okay? Because I want his eyebrows to kind of like match his mustache, you. So I'm gonna use the same black caviar. I'm gonna kind of curl the shape similar to what the mustache is. I wonder if you could do like a, you could do like a grumpy eyebrows, like if you wanted to, if you wanted to like make the eyebrows like go like down, <laughs> that would be cute. So I painted one of these guys yesterday. And again, I told you this is practice for painting on a actual chair, I'm gonna be painting a Christmas chair. And I asked in the Instagram stories today if everybody thought that they would like to have a tutorial on how to paint a Nutcracker. And everybody said yes, so this is what we're doing today, Nutcracker painting on the Dixie Bell paint page. So now he's got his eyebrows. And if you look at this guy, his eyebrows are actually a different shape. Again, totally up to you. I think his eyes are a little bit more big than this guy's eyeballs. But what we're gonna do next is work on some of his eye color. So you're gonna need another brush and you're gonna pick your color. I like dusty blue. Let's see if I can open my dusty blue. And I'm gonna take a different brush because that one is getting a bit smaller. So I'm gonna take a new brush. I'm gonna take some blue. Again, add some water to it because my lid on my blue has been open for a while. That means that the paint gets a bit thicker. So I have some dusty blue and we're gonna take a circle. I'm gonna bring the circle lower, right? You're gonna come fairly low in the eyeball because I'm gonna be covering the top part of his eye with another piece of black. So we're just gonna fill in his eyes in this direction. And you're gonna try and make both of these eyeballs similar in size. I think that's like, symmetry is, is the best part about this, this little guy. Normally I say get wild and paint whatever or however you like, but I think he needs to be a little bit symmetrical. So we've got dusty blue for the eyes. And if you would like, you can do the same dusty blue down here for his jacket. Let's do that while we have the blue out. So I'm gonna actually just add a like, almost like a blue bar into his outfit. Because remember his beard is gonna go in the middle, but this blue will break up a little bit of this area. And it's also where his buttons will be 
So we're going to add gold buttons. If you wanted to get crazy and actually add real buttons, you could do that with a glue gun. It'd be super cute. So now we've got our shoulder pads, our arms, the base for our body. And we're going to come up to the top now and do some gold. So let's switch brushes out and open up our moonshine metallic, shall we? Sorry, little. What do you call it? There you go, nutcracker. You sit right there. We're going to open up our gold. <laughs> Pam says she has trouble making circles. Come on, you can do it. I know you can. You know what helps with circles, honestly, is um, a square brush. I find that using a square brush from the Dixie Bell paint line like this really helps in getting circles, but this is smaller than, than this brush shape. But if you use the actual square brush, this works really good. Promise you, promise you, Pam. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into the gold. Gold Digger is from the Moonshine Metallics line, and I use this a lot when I do these small paintings. We're gonna just actually make his hat have another band. I wanna add a band of gold under the Holy Guacamole. It can be a little bit bigger, this band, than the other band. And the gold is actually going to be a bit of a thinner paint. If you've used Moonshine Metallics before, you know that you have to really build it up. So let's blast it with the heat gun. And then this way we can keep building his gold because I want that gold nice and bright, which means it needs to be thicker. So now also this is where you can start to add some detail. Do you want to add um, a button on the top of his hat? You can add like a gold button and he can have that cutie up there. You can start to add um, like floral decor. You could actually even get out your silkscreen stencils and silkscreen stencil him on some decor on his hat but we're just gonna paint in some shapes. These are basic, almost like an oval shape, elongated oval. And I'm just going to draw in some designs on his hat. He's full of whimsy and fun, this little nutcracker. So now we have his cutie little zap here. I'm gonna show you my trick to making perfect circles. I have a pencil, Canada pencil, represent from your Canada girl and it has a really great eraser on the end. See how that's a perfect circle? I'm going to take this circle, I'm going to dip it into my lid, okay? Now, this is how you get a perfect circle. You want to add a circle up here and add one here and add one more over here. Bam! Three perfect circles! Three perfect circles! Did you know that an eraser head makes the most perfect circles? It really does. It's crazy. So let's add, let's add some more actually. Let's do, instead of taking his shoulders and adding like epaulettes over here, let's just take some of that gold and add some designs. Let's see if I can do this holding on and my head behind the camera instead of in front of the camera. You'd never know, you guys, that an eraser on the top of your pencil makes the most perfect circles for arts and crafts, but now you do because I just, I just taught you my secret, my handy dandy secret of the day. <laughs> Pam, needs, Pam needs erasers in all different sizes to make circles happen the right way. Let's add the same thing. Remember, he's symmetrical, so whatever you do to one side, we're gonna do to the other because he has to match. You just have to keep dipping into your gold until can create all of the little circles that you like. So cute. I remember that's Moonshine Metallics. So it's going to shimmer and shine and be super cute all over the place. You can also come in here and start to add some details like, oh my goodness, I almost just dropped that tray of paint on my body. You can add some details here just around the bottom of his epaulets. Remember his beard is going to come in the middle. So we can just kind of add this gold detail straight across and make sure that you fill it in because it is a little bit thinner, that gold. And I'm gonna be using Terra for his beard today because Terra clay paint is already thick and has a texture. And when you paint on some gorgeous beard hair, whether it be Santa or your cutie little um, nutcracker, using Terra will help you get a beautiful texture for his beard hair. 
Okay, let's get to dry this here. I just want to dry that moonshine metallic so I can add in my second layer really fast. How are we doing? You guys still hanging in with me? Are you enjoying this fun little tutorial? Again, feeling very Bob Ross-ish. Bob Ross day for the win. Okay, so what's left? We've done his beautiful face. He doesn't have any details on his eyeballs and he needs some highlights. And we're still gonna work on his mouth, okay? So what do you do when you wanna add on the top part of his eyes? You're going to want to take a, again, a skinny brush, a nice thin pokey brush. And we are going to take some of that black. And this is what we're gonna do. We're going to draw in his eyeballs first. So you're gonna make his eyeballs, his pupils start to happen. We're getting technical terms here. He's got pupils. His pupils are very dilated. He's got some big dilated pupils. Okay, so now that we've done his pupils, because you did your blue, right? You did your dusty blue, and now you've done your black caviar, and now you're going to give him some eyelashes because this is now how his eyeballs are gonna to come to life, okay? You're gonna take the same brush and you're just gonna swipe over top of the entire eye. What do you think? Isn't that cute? Doesn't he look much cuter like this than this? Super cute, right? Again, you're just gonna swipe over top of the entire eye. You're gonna try and make them both the same. And all of a sudden his eyeballs look, he looks a little more distinguished, doesn't he? Super cute. Now, we're going to continue on this process. We're going to now work on his mouth. So, in order to create a true nutcracker, you need to, uh, you need to have a red mouth with creepy teeth, basically. See his teeth? Super cute, right? Hi, Leah, how are you today? We're painting a nutcracker. So we're gonna take our beautiful red, which you can use rustic red, you can use honky-tonk red. And we're basically gonna paint a rectangle below his mustache and over top of what you just painted, right? Because nutcrackers have a pretty big mouth. So we're gonna paint in his red mouth and it's always a square. They have a, a square mouth. I think I'm gonna actually bring it down a little bit more and I'm gonna blast it with my heat gun because I wanna build up these layers until this red is nice and red. So again, right over top of what I just did, taking that rectangle, deepening it, darkening it, and painting in his teeth in one quick minute so now he's got his red base for his his mouth to be honest with you i'm not the fan biggest fan of like a nutcracker mouth i think they look super creepy but if you didn't do his mouth in this way i feel like he wouldn't look like legit he's not gonna look like a nutcracker he's gonna look like something else so this is actually honky tonk red it's quite red like it's it's almost like a, a pink red so i'm gonna dry that and while that mouth is drying, we're gonna go back in and we're gonna add some more detail to his hat. So we're gonna take our same pencil eraser tip, okay? And we're gonna dip it into your black, which is your caviar or your black sands. And we're gonna to start to add some detail up here. While our mouth is drying, let's add some circles. Remember, top of the eraser makes perfect circles around the top of his hat. I really think that if I had a board that was about this width and about four feet tall, that would, we could paint like a whole body nutcracker. Wouldn't he be the cutest of a whole body nutcracker? Adorable. So now you've made perfect circles along the top. I mean, you can get crazy if you wanted to add circles in at the on top of his hat, whatever it is that you wanna do. I've done gold here. If you want, you could do like a couple of little black dots here, but we're gonna be painting hair there in a minute. So for now, I'm gonna just finish drying his mouth once that mouth is dry, we can start to paint his teeth. So there's a couple small things that you can do with your brushes to add some life to your dude, to your little nutcracker, right? So he's looking adorable, he's looking fancy pants, but here's the deal, he's not looking 100% lifelike yet. 
you're missing some highlights. I'm going to dip into my white fluff with a pokey brush, okay? And I'm going to add two little dots on his eyeballs. One, two. All of a sudden his eyes look just like a little bit more lifelike. Yeah, get Kristen to paint. You guys should paint live. We should do like a little painting party. We could join in a big group and paint like a nutcracker together. Let's do the same little highlights on his cheeks. The same little circles. Just little circle highlights. It's just enough to give him a little bit more shine, a little more pizzazz, right? So now we gotta heat up this mouth, get this mouth dry so that we can start to work on his teeth. Because really, other than teeth and hair, he's almost finished. We can add his buttons down here at the bottom because he is going to have buttons on his shirt. We're going to use Moonshine Metallic for the buttons and then we could do black lines in and then when we paint his beard over top, that part is going to disappear. Let's add in his buttons and his black strings for his buttons. So you can choose whatever brush you like to do your buttons. I think maybe I'll just do... How many buttons should we do? Let's do... There's one... See how many we can fit on this little canvas. I think I did two on the other one. Let's do three on this one. One, two, three. Three gold buttons on this side. And three gold buttons on this side. One, two. Wouldn't it be cute if you actually got real buttons and glued them on here? That would be adorable. I like to do that with my snowmen. Add real buttons to my snowmen. So there's three gold buttons and from the gold buttons you're going to be adding black strings which is going to attach actually underneath his beard. So let's go into the black caviar and just add some lines. I'm going to bring these lines all the way over okay and they're not even going to be true lines. I'm going to do them kind of thin like that because they need to be looking a little bit like strings. So these are his buttons on his suit and remembering his beard is going to cover all of this area so you don't even have to join them together at the other end. So there's our buttons and our string. And now, almost done, last but not least, let's work on some teeth. Now these teeth, I'm not going to lie, take up a little bit of time because I'm a perfectionist. Do you need to be a perfectionist and do your teeth as perfect as probably I'm going to do them? No, but this is this is how we roll people. I like to have some nice teeth. So I'm going to use this fine tip brush. And try and keep my hand as steady as possible. But I did have a coffee before we began. So this is as steady as it's going to get. Add in his little creepy nutcracker teeth. One more tooth here. And we're going to do the same on the bottom. Okay? You're going to come in and add the same. You don't have to curl them. Like they can be perfectly straight little, little rectangles. I just don't uh, feel the need to make my edges perfectly straight. I mean, this is hand painted art. Who has perfectly straight art? And who has perfectly straight teeth? Not me, not my nutcracker. So there you go. So then there are his teeth, okay? So now, let me dry his little strings down here at the base, here right where we're gonna add his cutie little beard. And I'm gonna show you how I like to attach his hair and his beard. Okay, so move this out of the way. Terra clay paint. And this can is well loved, I'm not gonna lie. It's a well loved can of Terra Clay Paint. Terra Clay Paint has texture to it. It's thick. It's like a thick pudding in there. And this paint is amazing for making hair and teeth. Or tear and teeth, hair and hair, hair and beard. I'm gonna grab a brush. You can use a square brush. You can use a pointy brush. I'm gonna use this brush right here. And we're gonna add his hair. So. It's up to you. you. You can flick these brushes out at the end or you can use like a thinner brush. Like 
again, personal preference for what you like. Let me clean both and I'll show you the difference. So when you use this square brush to make his hair, I'm gonna jump right into the Terra. See how thick the Terra is? And we're gonna go over and we're gonna start at the top and we're gonna flick his hair out. Flick, see how you flick it? So you can have thick hair, you can have thin hair. You're just gonna take that Terra, that nice thick paint and feather it out. I'm liking this thicker brush. If you use a thinner brush when you do his hair, you can flick out the edges a little bit thinner. Now we're just kind of giving him some personality. Can you see how that Terra paint sits on the canvas a little bit thicker and gives you just that perfect amount of hair for your man? He's looking super cute. I'm gonna bring his hair all the way down to his shoulders. All of a sudden he's got hair and he's got texture on his hair. I'll bring it in closer so you can see. Can you see that texture? Super cute, total fair vibes, right? Right? He's adorable, he's got some good hair. He's the nutcracker with the good hair. You can add in layers, you can come in closer, it's up to you, whatever you like. Now, we're gonna do the same thing for the beard. So I'm gonna lift it up a little bit so that it's on the edge so I can get down. So I'm gonna start here at his, at his teeth and we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna flick it out. basically creating a beard just to pull together his body and his face. And if you wanted to get crazy and add in like a gray or a black to like give his beard some dimension, you could totally do that. But at this point, my friends, my nutcracker is complete. How do we like that? Is he cute? Throw me some heart, show me some love. This is what we created just now I think it's been about 40 minutes. If I wasn't talking, I probably could have done them quicker. Here's my original inspo. There's snow on one. I can add some snow in there. This guy's got a little bit of a tan going on. <laughs> He's got a little tan. But ideally, the basic shapes that you're using are circles and triangles and rectangles. And you too can do this. They are adorable. I like to always practice on canvas before I put something on a piece of furniture. So for me, I like to add you know, details on the furniture. So I'm gonna be painting this little guy on the top of a seat, on the top of a chair um, that would be then taken to my consignment booth. Let's give him some snow. Let's give snow vibes. Go back to my Terra and he will be all done. You can put the snow over top of the hat. You don't have to put it over top of the hat. You could draw bigger snowflakes. You could use blue. Big same with your white. I'm gonna use the Terra because it just has that kind of little bit of a 3D effect for some snow. Do you think you can paint a Nutcracker? I think you can. I think that we should all get together and have a, a Nutcracker painting party. What do you say? Should I do one on my page where everybody can come join me? It's kind of fun. All you need is a piece of wood or a canvas some paint. You don't have to use the exact same colors. You can make his, his outfit whatever you like. <laughs> Great. I'm glad you loved it. You painted along through in, in watercolor. I would love to see. Send it to me. I want to see what everybody paints. I think that this is just a little cutie little Christmas decor. I mean, you could stick him up on your mantle. You could give him away as a gift. You could do whatever you like. He is adorable. He's adorable. And Pam, you too can do the circle eyes. I promise you can. And all you need to get yourself is that eraser. Like I told you, that's my magical trick. Finding an eraser, an unused eraser, is your secret weapon to getting the most perfect circles. You could do circles on the shoulders. This little guy has some green shoulders. The options are literally endless. I kind of want to paint a retro, a retro one. If I did like pink and like lime green, he would be so cute, don't you think? Adorable, super cute. So that, friends, is all for me. You didn't get to see me today, but I'm here. Hi. <laughs> we painted him in about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. I think he would be super adorable on a board or like a plank wood. I've got some of these pieces of wood over here. Let's see if I can get one out before anything falls. Just some scrap wood. Wouldn't it be cute if you painted a full one here on this piece of wood? You could paint this with blue to start with. You could paint it black. You could put a little guy on there and then you could take this to your little vintage markets or to your booth or wherever it is that you sell. You could drill holes in here, make a hanging one. 
I mean, he's so cute and I know you can paint one. I know you can. I hope you had fun hanging out with me doing some little Christmas decor today. Don't forget the handy dandy tips of adding those tiny little white dots onto his cheek and his eyes. That's gonna make that detail pop. Using that Terra for his hair is gonna give it that texture so that he's got realistic looking hair. You could come in and outline the edges with black if you wanted to or gold. And don't forget to sign your name on the back because you painted it all by yourself. I think that he is a cutie Christmas nutcracker. Thanks for joining me. I will be live back here next Wednesday. You have a great afternoon and I will see you next week. And if you paint one, send it to me. I want to see. I want to see what you can create with a little bit of Dixie Bell paint. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye-bye.